Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. This is my review of Professor Katie Mack's The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking. This book is a lively antidote to our otherwise cheerful times. Instead of agonizing over a pandemic, political polarization, and economic upheaval, why not fret over the end of the entire universe? All jokes aside, why bother studying our universe's demise? Well, as Max says, contemplating our end helps us understand the fundamental nature of reality itself. Mac, known as Astro Katie to her legions of followers on Twitter, is a theoretical astrophysicist and professor of physics at North Carolina State University. She specializes in contemplating cosmic catastrophes like the Big Rip, the heat death of the universe, and most terrifyingly, vacuum decay. In her skillful hands, we learn that although our cosmic comeuppance won't be pretty, we at least have billions of years until it will occur. Unless, that is, if vacuum decay, the transition from the false metastable vacuum state we may currently be enjoying to its true minimum, or ground state, causing the instantaneous disintegration of baryonic matter, among other day-ruining effects, which she discusses with the perfect blend of academic rigor and poetic license, makes it the ultimate culprit of our doom. In this case, cosmic catastrophe may occur as you hear the end of this sentence. Following Yogi Berra's dictum that it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future, Mac warns us that the universe's exact fate is much less certain than how it began. While she largely eschews the typical approach of recapitulating cosmology's vast history, she does note that our knowledge of the origin of the universe, too, was once more nebulous. Well into the 20th century, there were many rival cosmogenies, including cosmic eggs, Lemaitre's primeval atoms, and even the biblical book of Genesis. Nevertheless, cosmic eschatology has long gotten short shrift. The end of everything appears exactly a hundred years after the famous debate between astronomers Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis concerning whether or not the Milky Way galaxy was itself the entire universe, or if there were other galaxies in the cosmos as well. The so-called Great Debate was resolved three years later when Edwin Hubble demonstrated that an object then known as the Great Spiral Nebula in Andromeda was not a nebula at all but an entirely separate galaxy. Further observations by Hubble proved that the universe was expanding, which immediately prompted speculation about what happened when its expansion began. Scientists eventually settled on the Big Bang Theory, it reigns today. All the while, attention to the opposite end of the timeline, if there is one, has been sparse and speculation reigns. Mack's surprisingly lively account of the Bang's end-of-time counterpart is uplifting, with a wry wit permeating its 240 pages. It is meticulously researched, nicely illustrated, and copiously footnoted. Although footnotes are usually the bane of the reading experience, that is not so with Mac. Her joke per footnote ratio is darn near unity. Comparable books aimed at popular science audiences are, of course, Stephen Hawking's Apocal, A Brief History of Time, and from Sabina Hassenfelder's her book, Lost in Math, How Beauty Leads Physics Astray. The latter similarly blends first-person expert perspective, as well as wit, as well as interviews with other experts, including some of the same scientists Mac has conversed with. Unlike Hassenfelder, though, Mac is more optimistic about possibilities for scientific progress in realms of astroparticle physics that are currently untestable, such as multiverse theories, vacuum decay, and the large extra dimensions models. My only minor qualm with this otherwise masterful book is that it lacks the vantage point of an experimental astrophysicist. Had Mack surveyed a few of us alongside the many theorists and high-energy experimentalists she interviewed, it would have added another dimension to her book. Instrument builders can and should act as assayers of the theories they are testing. Amidst Mack's humor is beautiful prose. Contemplating future end times research, she writes, Someday, deep in the unknown wilderness of the distant future, the sun will expand, the earth will die, and the cosmos itself will come to an end. In the meantime, we have the entire universe to explore, pushing our creativity to its limits to find new ways of knowing our cosmic home. We can learn and create extraordinary things, and we can share them with each other. And as long as we are thinking creatures, we will never stop asking, what comes next? In the end of everything, eschatology meets cosmology, evoking, at least in this reader, an aphorism from Ecclesiastes. 
Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. Mac's brief history of the future is bound to inspire minds, young and old, not to deny the eventual death of the universe, but rather to embrace it while there's still time. I'm Brian Keating, Chancellor's Distinguished Professor of Physics at the University of California, San Diego, with this review of Katie Mack's The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic.